Howdy folks, thank you very much for tuning in, it is appreciated. And um, also a big shout out to those uh, customers who recently have been visiting our website to make a purchase, uh, linking directly from our YouTube channel. So thank you very much, it does mean a lot to me. So today we're going to have another look, yes another look, at the Skywatcher Star Travel 80, but from a different angle. Uh, not literally. So, a couple of things missing. Can you tell what it is yet? Well, you'll notice there's no finder scope. And it's on a photographic tripod. So, there may be a situation where you only want this scope as a spotting scope. Looking at the stars and the moon is of no interest to you whatsoever. You just want the OTA, which is the Optical Tube Assembly. To, so, to use this as a spotting scope, what we have is a multi-coated objective lens, uh, a couple of decent Plossel eyepieces. This, with this version that we're selling, the OTA, it comes with Plossel eyepieces, not modified achromatics. comes with a very nice um, non-dielectric coated 45 degree erect image prism uh, diagonal. Uh, which gives correct orientation left and right. So it's pretty much, yeah, as you would expect from a standard spotting scope. So it will have its ad advantages and disadvantages. So let's get the disadvantages out of the way first. It's not waterproof, it's not shockproof, it's not dustproof you're not going to take this scope out in all conditions but if you are a fair weather user and you only go out when the sun's shining uh, you want to put it in the back of your car stick it on your camera tripod go into the local bird hide go out to a, 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 a local beauty spot looking over the sea looking over the, the estuaries whatever the only thing that matters to you is the optics when you think about it Specification wise, you're spending around half the price that you would for a fully waterproof rubber armoured spotting scope. But that bit is not of interest to you if you don't like going out in all conditions. Optically, you're getting a similar scope for half the price that you would normally pay. You'd normally expect to pay, give or take, £250 for an 80mm spotter. Um, that is nitrogen waterproof. So what about eyepieces? Well you come with with this version you get a couple of Plossel eyepieces which are 12 and a half and a 26 millimeter. The 12 and a half is, is multi-coated. The 26 is is quoted as fully coated but I, I believe it's multi-coated. Believe me. Um, I, 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 I reckon it is multi-coated. Now we'll come on to that in a second. And so the magnifications you get uh, around about 15 to 32 times plus a barlow which will take it on to up to 64 times. But you, you'll, what you'll find is for most occasions you, you're only going to use 15 and 30 magnification of thereabouts anyways. And you, on your average day out putting a, a spotting scope in a bird hide how, how many times are you going to use 64 magnification if the, the, the object is only 20-30 metres away, you might not use that. But you can upgrade the eyepieces. It is limitless almost, the amount of eyepieces and even filtration, maybe a UV filter or a polarising filter to, to reduce the, um, the glare for, from the water. You can put these in, uh, uh, adapt these to the scope. And uh, so before we get onto the optics itself, Maintenance wise it's very very easy to use. You're not going to need the finder scope so you may even want to sell that and get a bit of your money back. There's no um, focuser on the top it's just a design here and all you've got to remember is bring it out to get closer in for farther away. That's all you need to remember. Regards maintenance uh, if, if you maybe got a spotting scope that's got a non-removable eyepiece and you end up with a bit of dust inside Undo that, take the eyepiece off, blow the dust out, no problem. Uh, you get a bit of dust on the inside of the prism. No worries. Take it off, blow, get your dust blower. Same applies 
to the objective lens where at first glance it's a non-removable lens shade but that just slides off so you can easily gain access to the objective lens if you um, need to clean it or use your blower brush or whatever. So on about the, so let's go on to the optics. What I've got in there at the moment is the, 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 the little silver eyepiece there. It's a 26mm. It gives uh, I think 15.2 magnification. The view you get through that is astonishing. It's a long eye relief eyepiece. There's no rubber eye cup. Uh, so it just take a little bit of getting used to to have your eye further away from the eyepiece that you may do normally. But the view you get is, is spectacular with this for a spotting scope in this price. I'm not talking about the stars, I'm just my usual subjects looking at chimney tops for chromatic aberration, uh, checking close up focus, everything that I would do with a normal review. It's not ED and so there is some chromatic aberration. Uh, there is a little bit of pincushion distortion but the the sharpness to the edge with this eyepiece is remarkable it really is it's not not what you call flat field technology uh, technology i will come on to that in a, in a in a minute or so but the the edge of field sharpness with this eyepiece is incredible just a little bit of pincushion distortion a little bit of um, per, um of a uh, red or violet uh, chromatic aberration, especially on high contrast subjects looking into tree uh, branches that are heavily backlit. Moving on, that sharpness, brightness, and the clarity looking into looking at the bottom of my garden where there was a, a, a section where I could not see anything with the naked eye. That the detail, the spider, you know, like the spider's webs in the in the in, in, in the darkness that you could pick out with these without disturbing the wildlife, absolutely incredible. Probably up there with many hundred millimeter spotting scopes. And with this being a non-zoom eyepiece, there's less glass um, in to go from A to B. There there is less glass elements uh, for the light to go through, so you get really really good light transmission, uh, and that's from a, a fixed eyepiece. Moving on to the 12.5mm eyepiece, uh, the chromatic aberration it seem, seems to change from a red to a purple and it's increased slightly but, but and uh, also uh, the pincushion distortion it increased slightly and a, a reduction in brightness uh, and contrast but still very good in low light and that gives a 30 magnification. I haven't tried the Barlow yet but it is a basic one with this telescope so be realistic yeah, you will get a drop up in quality at the higher magnification, but you can always upgrade the Barlow to something else in the future. On the subject of eyepieces, I've not got it with me at the moment, so I tried a couple of others with this. I put in a Ostara flat field, 19mm, and all of a sudden, flat field, the clue is in the title, straight lines to the edge. So you can upgrade the eyepieces. I put in an olive on ED eyepiece to notice a slight reduction, not total elimination, but a slight reduction in the chromatic aberration. Uh, this is not just a scope for looking at longer distance. I could focus down to around about uh, five meters or so, five to six meters, and the with a shallow depth of field, the, the it was really incredible the, the view you got through this scope, how, how it threw the background out of focus. Really, obviously that needs accurate focusing but you, you will soon uh, get the, ha the hang of that but um, yeah it gave it, for a single lens uh, instrument it, it was almost a three-dimensional um, effect you got with it. Just have a look at the lens there if you can. It's uh, not exactly the best lighting for that but so we'll move on. But uh, yeah, for using this as a spotting scope, it's very, very capable. Um, I It comes with a, a tripod adapter as standard, so you don't have to buy that separate. There is also a tripod thread there, but ignore that. That, that. that will not secure it very well. And there is a thread there if you want to put a, um, a, a, a camera on it piggyback. And on the other side... If you want to use the finder scope, by all means do so, whether it be the red dot that you get with it, 
or you or you get maybe a six times thirty or a nine times fifty or some other device that uses a hot shoe attachment. And uh, yeah, so that's a, a quick look at the another look at the uh, Star Travel eighty Skywatcher Star Travel eighty that it can be used as a spotting scope. You don't need to be into astronomy um, to purchase this scope. So thank you very much for watching. As always, and we shall see you next time.